So this video is to walk you through um, the FET circuit construction kit. If you Google FET circuit construction kit or FET series in parallel circuits or something like that, it should bring you here. Uh, the old video was for the original H um, uh, Java simulation. This is HTML5. So anyway, um, it'll work with your iPad or it should. So let's keep going. So there's an introduction and then the lab, but this video is your introduction, so let's just head to the lab. So here is your uh, workspace. Over here on the left, we kind of have our toolkit. So we have a wire, we have a battery, we have a light bulb, we have a resistor that you can get a very specific resistance out of. We have a switch you can open and close. Wire is listed again. Um, we have a fuse, which fuses are designed that if you put a uh, large current through them, uh, the wire inside melts, that it breaks the fuse. So it's interesting that it's there. I don't know that we're going to need a fuse. So one thing you can do, if you want to get rid of something, right, anything that you added into the circuit, if you click on it, there's a trash can. So you could probably figure out that will get rid of uh, your item. So goodbye. Um, other things in our toolbox, we have a large value battery that the small value battery only goes up to 120 volts. The large value battery goes all the way up to, what is that, 100,000 volts. We also have a larger resistance light bulb, a larger value resistor, and then other random things like a dollar bill, a paper clip, a coin, an eraser, which would have very high resistance, um, a hand, weird, a dog, weird, and a pencil. Now, I don't know about a hand and a dog. Um, a, an eraser, eh, that's a super high resistance. It's made out of rubber, but pencil ed actually does um, conduct electricity because it's more graphite um, than lead. I'm not sure there's any lead in pencils anymore anyway. Uh, so those are all things that you can put into your circuit. Now for other features of this simulation, um, we have options for showing the current, which once I build a circuit, I'll show you how that works. So we'll get back to this little window over here. Uh, voltmeters and ammeters, we'll also get back to that once I build a circuit. Um, over here, you can affect the wire resistivity. We're going to leave, leave that alone, but it's neat that you can do that. Um, and then for the battery resistance, we're going to leave it at zero as if it were an ideal battery. But when batteries go bad, that's actually what's happening. The resistance of the battery starts to increase and uh, it doesn't produce um, the power that, that it should. But we're going to leave the battery resistance down at zero. Um, also, down here we have pictures or symbols. So you can use actual pictures as if uh, to represent the, the what the items actually are, or you could use the symbols um, as they show up in circuit schematics and the reference table. So let's build a circuit. So we know that in order to get um, current to flow, the two things you need are a source of potential difference, ta-da, the battery, and a closed loop. Um, and that loop can be very simple. Honestly, I could just use two wires here. And that is my closed loop. And so the current is flowing. We can see that the uh, electrons are flying through that loop and it set the battery on fire. Um, and that's because they, that's called a short circuit. A short circuit occurs when you have very low resistance, giving you a very high current. A good way to have very low resistance is to literally have nothing in the circuit but wires. Wires have very low resistance. So yeah, you're going to create um, a very low resistance circuit, very high current, and, uh, and set the battery on fire, which can happen if you short a battery. Okay, our poor battery, let's leave it alone. So one thing you can do if you want to open up your circuit is you can click on a junction, a place where the wires meet, and click on the scissors, and it will break open your circuit and give our battery a rest. Give it a break. Yay! Um, so you can click these points and move the wires around. And then let's actually put in a resistor. Let's give the circuit something to actually use the energy. So the battery provides the energy, 
provides the voltage and then the things in the circuit like the um, resistor use that energy. The battery is called a uh, potential gain and the, the resistor is called a potential drop. So you can actually um, click on your resistor and change its value. This particular resistor goes all the way down to from, from 1 ohm, very low resistance, setting things on fire, great job, all the way up to 120 ohms. And you can see now that the electrons, uh, they're moving much more slowly because the current is less. We know from Ohm's law that if you increase the resistance, you decrease the current. We increased the resistance, and so we decreased the current, and so our electrons there are moving more slowly. So as you change the value of that resistor, bring the resistance down, electrons move more quickly. Bring the resistance up, electrons move more slowly. Um, if you've been paying close attention, you might notice that the stripes on the resistor are also changing because of that striped color code for resistors. Um, but we don't need the color code here because it says right here on the screen, this particular resistance is 76.5 ohms. We can also change the value of the battery. And so there's our battery. We can also flip it around, which uh, you can see as they flip it back and forth, you can watch what happens to the electrons one way, the other way, one way, the other way. So yeah, that actually directs which way the current goes. And if I go over here and click on conventional current, that will actually show you which way the current is going. And we consider that the current flow goes from positive to negative. Even though it's electrons moving in the wire, it's really the absence of electrons that's moving. I don't want to get too deeply into that. Just consider that um, current flows from the positive terminal to the negative terminal. And if I click on my battery, not only can I flip it back and forth, but I can change the value. If I have less voltage, notice my current slow down because I know that voltage and current are directly proportional. Um, so with less voltage, I have less current flow. With more voltage, I have more current flow. And you can bring in a light bulb and you can change the value of the light bulb if you want. Mm -hmm. Trash the light bulb. Um, and you can bring in a switch that you can open and close if you like. Um, I don't know that we need a switch, but you can bring that in. Switch is closed, switch is open, switch is closed. You get the point. Okay, so here's our simple circuit. Simple circuit only has one thing, but the point of this lab is series and parallel circuits, not simple circuits. So let's get into building those circuits. Let's move our battery over here for a sec, and let's make a series circuit of two resistors. So let's break open this wire, break it open, and let's bring in another resistor, and we can make these values whatever you want, anywhere from zero to 120. Maybe we'll make this guy 60. You used to be able to type it in, not anymore, or well. All right, 60, why not? And then we connect them together with a wire. Boop. Maybe this guy will make him 30. There we go, there we go. 30. Um, and so we have another wire. Remember, you have to close the loop, so let's close that loop. We can even close the loop this way. But I do want to include, to measure the current, I want to include an ammeter. Now, they have the cheating ammeter. Cheating ammeter, you can just put this little magnifying glass right on top of the wire, and it will tell you what the current is at any point. Um, but that's cheating because you're not actually wiring that ammeter into the circuit. Traditional ammeters are wired in series. And this tells me 0.83 amps. Uh, we know about from our study of series and parallel circuits that the current is the same at all points in the circuit, so it doesn't matter where I put that ammeter. Uh, we also know that ammeters right next to the power supply, no matter the type of circuit, ammeters right next to the power supply, being the battery, measure total current. Um, so I have the current here in my series circuit, 0.83 amps, I'm, uh, I'm looking good. 
Now, voltage is not the same. The potential difference is not the same at all points in a series circuit. So let me show you how that works. So here's my voltmeter. I drag that out of the box. And voltmeters are connected in parallel. So if I have my voltmeter over here, I put one probe on one side of the battery, one probe on the other, and what does it tell me? It tells me that my voltage is 74.5 volts because that's what I set it for. Maybe I'll set it, let's make it 60 volts, why not? 60 volts. Um, so that's a 60 volt battery right there. The voltage is shared in a series circuit, so if I check these two resistors, they won't be 60. In a parallel circuit, all of the voltages are the same. In a series circuit, the voltage adds up. So if I check these guys here, that guy's 40 volts, and I bet this one's 20. One on one side, one on the other, boom, 20 volts. So there's my series circuit. And again, this is all pictures, but if I wanted to see it as schematics, um, with straight lines and there's a symbol for a cell or a, or a battery. It's really a cell, but you can call it a battery. Um, and the zigzaggy symbol for resistors. Um, but I kind of like the, the pictures. So we'll, we'll go with those. Um, now let's break this circuit and let's instead build a parallel circuit instead of our series circuit. Now, I like to say that series circuits are like holding hands, as if these two resistors were holding each other's hand, um, and that a parallel circuit is more like a hug. Now, I want to get ammeters for each branch of my parallel circuit, because the currents are not all the same in parallel. So I'm actually going to reconnect this guy, put that ammeter there, and break open the circuit here. Add in another wire. All right, so there's that ammeter right there is measuring the total current. I'm going to break out this guy here and here and bring them over here. Notice now that the two resistors are parallel to each other. Get out of here, voltmeter. I'll need you in a sec. So the two resistors are parallel to each other. And I stick in ammeters, one for this branch, one for this branch, and complete loops. And we can see that the current adds up in parallel like it should. This guy up here is measuring the total current. This guy in the second branch is measuring the current through the second branch. This guy in the third branch is measuring the current through the third branch and these guys are independent of each other. Watch what happens when I break this circuit here. Once I break that, this bottom guy here is unaffected. If I do the same thing here, break it open, this one, unaffected. It does affect the total values though. So like if this says three amps, but if I pull out this branch right here, two amps. If I break out this branch, one amp. So it does affect the total values, but the individual resistors are independent of each other. Now as for voltage, going across in parallel, one on one side, one on the other, 60 volts, 60 volts, come on, and 60 volts from my battery. All of the voltages are the same in parallel. That's why your house, which is wired in parallel, all of the outlets are 120 volts. Heavy duty outlets in your house are 240 or maybe 220, and that has to do with a combination parallel series situation. But anyway, um, well, that's the simulation. Uh, you have a series circuit there and a parallel circuit there. Um, and again, this is the cheating ammeter that you could measure the current at whatever point you wish, but it's better to actually wire them in. If you have any questions about the simulation or whatever, uh, you know how to reach me. You can email me or send me a message on Google Classroom, but email always works. Uh, I hope that helped and have a good day.